What's going on, everybody? It's Cooper from the Back Pins, and today we are going to start a series where we're going to talk about the teams and what they look like upon the completion of the inaugural PBR Team Series draft. It was really fun to be there in person. I'm glad I got to see it. And for those of you that weren't there in person, I hope you guys tune into it on Pluto or the Cowboy Channel Plus because it was such a cool experience. I never thought I would see a PBR draft in my lifetime, and that's what they gave us, provided us, and I thought they did a really good job with the coverage of it. And when you compare it to what the NFL draft looks like, I think PBR nailed it. I thought they did a really, really good job. But this series here is just going to be a breakdown of, of the draft picks and then the free agent signings, and those are starting to happen now as we get more removed from the actual draft you're starting to hear about guys getting signed in free agency and of course they have the supplemental draft I believe on June 2nd if not June 2nd it's right around there so that's coming up as well and guys like Jess Lockwood Cooper Davis they are going to be in that draft and I would expect that they're going to be probably the top two picks that would just be my guess but uh yeah so we're going to do this for every team we're going to start with the Austin Gamblers today so let's grab them slides let's talk about the Austin Gamblers. To kick things off, let's just mention that they are led by Michael Gaffney, 1997 PBR world champ. This guy's a legend of the game, the G-Man. He's a guy I watched a lot as a kid. The G-Man and the rest of the front office for the Gamblers had the number one overall pick. And... It's been touched on previously, but it was a snake draft, which means that if you have the first pick in the first round, in the second round, you will have the last pick. So I play a lot of fantasy sports. I'm pretty familiar with these. Picking number one overall is is cool and everything because you get on paper what's the best guy, but there's a lot of picks in between you and your next pick, your second pick. So It's a double-edged sword. You can get whoever you want at the top of the draft, but you do wait quite a while before you pick again. And the Gamblers decided to go with Jose Vitor Leme at number one overall. They then came back in the second round at 16th overall and selected Austin Richardson at 17th overall to kick off the third round. They picked Lucas Davino at 32nd overall with the last pick in the fourth round. They selected Claudio Montagna Jr. And with the first pick in the fifth round, 33rd overall, they selected Connor Halverson. On top of those five guys that they drafted, the Gamblers are one of the first teams you started to hear about signing free agents. They have signed Ezekiel Mitchell, Dakota Lewis, Griffin Smeltzer, and Blake Smith since the completion of the draft. It's good to see teams being active in free agency. These guys kind of started the party from what I could follow along with on social media and looking at websites. So that's awesome for the gamblers. But let's take a deeper dive into the guys that currently make up their roster. Now, there's going to be more additions as time moves on. I'm recording this about a week or so removed from the draft. So if I'm missing anything, I apologize. But this is who I know is on their roster as of right now. With their first overall pick, like I mentioned before, the Gamblers selected Jose Vitor Leme. He's a left-handed bull rider. Placed fifth in the world in 2022. Had a 52% riding percentage across all levels of competition of the PBR in 2022. His top ride in 2022 was 94 and three quarters on riding solo. So that's pretty high score there. I can't tell you anything you probably don't already know about this guy. He is a two-time world champ, won him back-to-back in 2020 and 2021. He's a machine. He can ride any type of bull, left, right, hard to track. It does not matter with this guy. He can ride them all. He's a 90-point machine, and he is his rider over bull score is just outstanding. He's consistently getting marked two-plus points above his bulls when he does uh, successfully complete a ride. And you just don't see many guys like that. He had a tough 2022 as far as injuries. He did get banged up a little bit. But I think when this guy comes back for the team series, he's going to be ready to roll, motivated. And being the number one overall pick, there's some pressure that comes with that. But pressure doesn't really phase this guy. He's stood in the face of immense pressure before and came out on top. So I don't think that's going to be an issue for this guy. 
when we get deeper into team construction for these teams, the basic concept is your first two picks, you need to hit on them. Those are guys that you're banking on being the cornerstone of your team. And if I'm picking a captain, Jose Vitor Leme fits that mold to a T. Humble guy, really respectful, really what nice, everything like that, but an immense competitor. And he knows what it takes to win. He knows what it takes to win at the highest level of the sport. He's proved that by being a back-to-back world champ. This guy is going to be a good presence in a locker room, not only for a younger guy, but just anybody. When you're around greatness like that, it's hard not to have it rub off on you. And I think Jose is going to do just that. I was not surprised he's the number one overall pick. And I can guarantee you Austin's ecstatic to have him on their roster. With the Gambler's second pick at 16 overall, they went with Austin Richardson. He's a right-handed bull rider. He placed 11th in the world in 2022, had a 33% riding percentage, and his top ride was 94 and a half on Whoopa. This guy's more than capable of going 90 points on any given bull at any given time. His style is really showy too, so he can definitely get some points out of a bull that he's dominating. So look for that rider over bull score with this guy. He's a little bitty guy, so it looks good. You know, that's kind of one of my things with bull riding is crappy as it is for the bigger guys if a bigger guy and a little guy make the same bull ride the littler guy is probably going to score higher most of the time that's just kind of how the sport is like i said this guy can handle the the rank ones he put it all over Wupa this year this guy is a really really promising young talent and i'm not surprised that he was a top two round pick had a little bit of injury problem towards the end of the year. It kept him out of the very last few events for the world finals, but he came back for the world finals and looked relatively healthy. Doesn't look like he's going to have any injury problems coming into this team deal. And that's going to be something you have to pay attention to coming into this team series, because there are guys that got picked that are going to have some injury problems from, from the jam packed year that they just had to do. It was a grueling season. A lot of events packed in a short amount of time. So injuries are going to happen in the sport. Obviously, if you're watching this, you already know that. So it's just something to pay attention to. And it probably did play into some of the draft picks, depending on how healthy a team thinks a guy is, because obviously they can't dig through their medical records. That's illegal. So you're really going off of what you know. So based on Austin riding at the world finals, he completed all the rounds competition. I don't think he had any injury problems that I can remember. He's going to be healthy, motivated. And this guy is a young guy that can bring a lot of energy to the locker room. He's excited about riding bulls. He's excited about what he gets to do. And I think he's a great addition to the gamblers and him and Jose, that one, two punch there. Like I said, they can go 90 at any given time. So I really like what they did with their top two picks with the very next pick in the draft at 17th overall to kick off the third round, the gamblers took Lucas Davino. He's a right-handed bull rider. Finished in 17th place in the world in 2022, had a 54% riding percentage. That's pretty dang high. His top ride of 2022 was 92 points on Juju. I really thought this was a pretty good pick at 17th overall. Lucas is a guy who has been around for a while. When you start talking about how a guy like Lucas compliments a guy like Austin that they took at 16. Lucas is a guy who's going to ride a little bit, probably higher percentage of his bulls than Austin. And that's not a slight at Austin. Austin tends to be either a pile of them, like upper eighties to nineties or kind of bucks off. He's kind of a home run hitter is what you'd call him. I guess Lucas is a little bit more even keeled. You might not see as many 90 point rides as a guy like Austin or Jose, obviously, but he's going to ride a pretty, pretty strong percentage of his bulls which in this team deal, that's going to play a big factor in it because you're talking about the highest total score on five head. Well, if you ride more bulls than the other team, you already automatically win. And he is capable of going 90. I'm not saying he's not. So don't worry about that. You match this guy up, right? And he can put a lot of points on the scoreboard as well. But I just think this is a really good pick. And if you pay attention to what they did, they went with the left-handed guy and Jose Vitor Leme at the top and then supplemented him with two right-handed guys. And that's another thing that you're going to see with this team deal is they're going to want balance across that active roster. You're not going to want too many guys that are left-handed guys that tend to get along with bulls that go into their hand or vice versa. If they're right-handed guy bulls that go to the right, 
you want to even balance it both. When you're talking about drawing five bulls, the likelihood that all of them are going to go one way is not very high. So I really like what they did with their first three picks here. The gamblers had a pretty good start to their draft, in my opinion. With the last pick in the fourth round, 32nd overall, the gamblers then selected Claudio Montagna Jr. He's a right-handed bull rider, placed 35th in the world in 2022, had a 31% riding percentage in 2022 as well. His top ride from last year was 88 and three quarters on facetious. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I didn't think Claudio had a really good year as far as his standards go. This is a guy that's been around for a long time. He's not a slouch. I don't know what the deal was this last year, but he is better than the 35th guy in the world, in my opinion. So when you talk about value, you're getting a guy that, in my opinion, is quite a few pegs higher than 35. You're getting him at the 32nd overall pick. That's a slam dunk value. And when you're getting to the later rounds in the draft, that's what it all is. I shouldn't even say just later rounds. Every pick in a draft, you have to give that rider, in this case, a value and your hunting value. Did I have this guy ranked 10th, but he fell to 15? Well, then I got good value. That's what these guys were trying to do as general managers. And to me, at 32 overall, Claudio is probably going to outperform those expectations. So when you're looking at the value that they got at this pick, add it with the fact that he's a veteran, been around for a while. He can help the younger guys come up through the ranks. I think this is a pretty good pick for the gamblers as well. And with their fifth and final selection at 33 overall, the Austin gamblers took Connor Halverson. He's a left-handed bull rider. He finished 38th in the world in 2022 and had a 34% riding percentage. His top ride from 2022 happened at the world finals. 89 points on walking tall. I was really impressed with Connor on that bull ride. He made a bull that's not that easy to ride look really easy. Walking tall is a big, strong one that gets up and down, has a lot of verticalness to him, and Connor put it all over him. And to me, this is what I've been waiting for from this guy. I've known about Connor for a few years now. He lives in Nebraska, me being in North Dakota. I'd heard about him, and I'd seen him get on a few bulls before he ever got to the PBR, but I'd heard about how good he was. It took him a little bit of time to get on tour. He made his way up through the velocity ranks, Made the 2021 PBR World Finals at 19, I believe. I think he's only 20 right now, if I remember right. And didn't have as good a year as he probably hoped. But don't kid yourself, this 20-year-old is going to be a superstar, in my opinion, two, three, four years down the road. He just needs a little seasoning. So the way I look at it for Connor is, yes, you can say, well, he didn't even qualify for the World Finals on paper. He got in on alternate status. That doesn't matter to me. This kid's 20 years old. He's got a lot of room for growth. And when you watch him ride, you can see the potential. It's just learning how to finish for him right now, which I don't think is going to be an issue for him. You get him paired up with the guys like Jose Vitor Leme, Michael Gaffney as your head coach, Austin Richardson, Davino. These are guys that know what it takes to get it done at the highest level of the sport. I think this is going to be a really good thing for Connor moving forward. And I think you're going to start to see the potential turned into reality with this guy. I think in two, three, four years, like I said already, this guy's going to be a marquee name on tour. So I really thought this was a really good fifth round pick for the gamblers based on upside. And like I mentioned at the top of the video, the gamblers were one of the first teams to really get active when it came to signing free agents that I could follow. At least they signed four guys post draft up to the recording of this video they are Dakota Lewis, who finished 29th in the world. He's a left-handed bull rider. Ezekiel Mitchell, he finished 36th. He's a right-handed bull rider. Griffin Smeltzer finished 51st. He's a right-handed bull rider from Canada. And Blake Smith finished 66th. He's a left-handed bull rider from Canada. So when you look at these free agent signings as a whole, Dakota Lewis, this guy's got all the grit, toughness, old-school cowboy in him that you could ask for out of a bull rider. And he's a guy that I think is a good locker room guy. He never lets failure destroy his confidence. And when he does win, man, he gets fired up. Like to me, this is a guy I want in my locker room because I know he's going to try his guts out. Ezekiel Mitchell, this is a guy I think a lot of people are surprised didn't get drafted. And I think this is a great free agent signing. Zeke, as far as pure talent wise, he can do things on the back of a bull that just simply most guys can't. He's a very good athlete. 
He can really dress him up when he gets tapped off as well. Didn't have the 2022 individual season he wanted, but I assure you, I can see Zeke coming back motivated as ever to put his mark on this PBR team series. Griffin Smeltzer and Blake Smith rounding out their free agent signings that I've found so far. Two Canadian guys, and one thing about Canada, they get on some big strong ones up there, so these big strong bulls that they're running in nowadays down in the States, they're not going to bother these guys. I know they've hit the velocity tour ranks quite a bit this year and found some success on that tour. So I really like what they did with their free agent signings. You get two PBR world finals qualifiers on the free agent market. That's a pretty good deal for the gamblers in my opinion, but I think that'll wrap it up for today. The gamblers, in my opinion, did some really good things in the draft, even though I didn't necessarily love their draft position. If it was me personally, I would have rather been towards the middle of that first round just because in a snake draft, if you're towards the middle, you're never that far away from your next pick. So let's say there's a guy that you think could fall to you, but you're not 100% sure. Well, now you have the flexibility to go get them. Where when you have to wait like 15 picks or whatever it was, yeah, 15, that's a long time. And so you either have to really trust that you ranked your guys correctly and that your guys are going to fall to you, or you're going to really have to get aggressive with moves. Whereas being in the middle of that draft, kind of gives you some more flexibility in that department. Obviously getting a guy like Jose Vitor Lemme on any team is a great thing. He's going to be your go-to guy, your team captain, all that. When you look at their five draft picks, they went with two lefties and three righties. And like I've talked about already, I think that's going to be important. It's going to be a key theme for these teams is you've got to have guys that can ride bulls that go either way or do different things. You can't just have five left-handed specialists because when you draw bulls that are going to go away from a guy's hand most of the time, who do you put on them that you trust? So I think they did a really good job. I think this, they've got some young guys that with a lot of potential mixed in with the right amount of veteran presence. I think the Austin gamblers did a great job. If you like this video though, let me know what you guys think of the gamblers picks and free agent signings in the comments, leave a like subscribe. It does nothing but help the channel grow, guys. We appreciate you guys for tuning in and always give us feedback on what we can do better or what you guys want to see us do. We're going to do this for every team right now. That's the plan. We're just going to probably go in order from first overall pick down to eighth, which to me seems to make sense. So don't worry if you don't want to know about the gamblers, but say you want to know about the Kansas City Outlaws. We will get it to you. Just might take a little bit. I got to figure out exactly what kind of schedule I'm going to put these videos on. But I had fun. I hope you guys did too. We're going to link our social medias, Rank Ride social medias in the description below. And until next time, have a great one. Come back and visit us again from the back pans.